Hello. Tonight, we are going to make my delicious vegetable beef stew in the Instant Pot. Let's get started. So the first thing that I like to do is take my um, vegetable oil, just put about two tablespoons in there, and then actually um, take a paper towel and just kind of um, rub it around so that it goes across the entire bottom and a little bit up the sides. This, in my opinion, is why I don't get the burn cycle that we definitely don't want to get when we are uh, making something in our Instant Pot. So the other things that we're going to put in there, we're basically just going to dump them in. So I have about a pound of stew meat that's been frozen and um, has now been thawed for the day today. And then I also have uh, some potatoes, just evenly cubed potatoes. I have a can of Rotel tomatoes. You could use any diced tomatoes. I like these because they have a really good flavor with the, the mini chilies in there. I'm also going to add a can of green beans. I do drain the green beans because I don't like the taste of green bean juice. I also have a can of corn, but I do leave the juice in it for the corn. I, um, I have a can uh, or a jar of mushrooms. I use fresh mushrooms most of the time, but I have this in my pantry. This is kind of a great pantry clean. Um, and I, I probably removed half of the liquid from the mushrooms. And then I also have about a half of a bag of frozen mixed vegetables, which are really frozen. So they're just gonna go in there kind of all in one big clump. And they'll, they'll melt as we're cooking. The next thing I'm gonna add is going to be some of my spices here. So I'm going to start with a little bit of minced onion. I prefer real onion, but I don't have that in my pantry today or else I'd be using it. So we're gonna go with the minced. It also gives it a really great flavor. I'm gonna put a little bit of the garlic salt in there. Also, I really like using the minced garlic that comes in the little jar, but I don't have any of that right now either. I'm gonna be putting just a tiny little bit of celery seed. The last soup I made was potato soup and I kinda went crazy on the celery seed. So we're gonna minimize that. A Little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And then I've got a packet, and this is really important. Uh, I've got a packet of the ranch, Hidden Valley Ranch, um, dressing and that just gives it a really good flavor. I use about half of the packet and then I'm going to add pretty much this whole container of beef broth. Um, so some of the recipes call for two of these but I'm actually thinking that we may not even need a full one. I'm actually going to pour it until I see that the, um, the vegetables in here are pretty much all saturated and covered. However much that takes is how much of the broth I want. You don't have to use vegetable broth. You can definitely use uh, chicken broth, vegetable broth. Uh, this is actually beef, so, um, and that's what I have on hand. So after I've done that, I'm going to take I'm gonna sneeze. going to take a spoon and I'm just going to stir it all up and I'm really looking to see how much liquid I've got in there do I need any more and I think I might need a little bit more so I'm going to go ahead and pour what's left in there and then I'm going to add maybe another cup to get the right amount of um, liquid that I want. If you don't have the right amount of liquid, your whatever you're cooking may not come to pressure. If it doesn't come to pressure, it isn't gonna cook. So 
uh, really important. Also, if you don't have enough liquid, you can very easily go into that burn cycle. And once you've done a burn cycle, you don't ever want that to happen again. I also like to add a little bit of kitchen bouquet, which gives it more of a beef, a beef like flavor to the broth. Okay, so now we're ready to cook it. I do sometimes use the um, fresh vegetables. Um, I like frozen vegetables. They all work, but for me tonight, I'm just cleaning out my pantry. So I'm using these items that I already have. So once we've put our lid on, we're going to make sure that we have it pushed over to the part where it's going to seal, not the part where it's going to vent. And then the buttons we're gonna push, we're gonna push cancel, and then we're gonna push pressure cook. And we're gonna cook this because there's really only the vegetables that are frozen. We're gonna cook it for about 23 minutes. Once it switches to on, we know we've done what we need to do to get it set. And also we're gonna, again, make sure that our little knob is facing over to the ceiling rather than the venting position. And now we just wait.